Aloha and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Got Your Six podcast. This six-question podcast brings together high performers to share their methods, strategies, and ideas delivered in an informative and, most importantly, actionable way that will help you lead yourself and those around you from the battlefield to the boardroom. Coming to you every episode, I'm your host, Tony Nash. And into the breach. Nothing mentioned on this podcast is an endorsement or opinion of the Department of Defense. I got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. Got your six, we got your back. I got your six. Sixers, this episode um, is another classmate of mine, but this time not from the Academy, but from Cornell. Go Big Red. Uh, Irv Thomas is here, just got his master's degree or his MBA uh, in May, and he's just going to do big things just coming out uh, back in 2019 as we covered in the bio uh, from special forces it's former green beret stoked to have you here yeah tony it's my pleasure to be on the show and uh share some uh hard er hard earned or hard uh learned uh nuggets of wisdom yeah i I, i'm just so excited to get it i'm trying to control my excitement um so coming right out of the army and going right into, you know, the civilian sector, especially into like getting your MBA and now doing what you're doing, is there something, there's gotta be something I would say that you implement daily from your time in the military. Yeah, I, I think the ability to adapt, right? We always get assigned a mission or a position and then we have to adapt and, and that's across a lot of roles, but that's how I was successful in the military. Let me adapt to my environment and, and that's what I do now. So come with a plan, but be prepared to adapt it and live that out daily. What am I going to do better today? How am I going to adapt to the situation to maximize the value? Where do you find that you can adapt the best or like how you can like kind of almost say, Hey, stop. I need to adapt here as opposed to kind of get sucked into what's going on in the environment. Yeah. I, I think it's very easy with work to get two in the weeds, right? You get into it and you're not able to pull back. So uh, that is something I took when I was team sergeant is I like, hey, step back. What am I missing? And that that's what I do now is when I was doing management consulting, which I just stopped doing was, okay, we're in the, we're in the problem set with the clients. We're helping them. Um, but this is not working. We could see it's not working and that's why they're paying us. Let's step back. And how can I adapt my approach? Um, maybe I'm not reaching someone on a personal level, maybe, you know, adapt to my approach of how I'm looking at the problem set and, you know, maybe running some different numbers and just go about that through my day. Right. And for those who don't know, just briefly talk about what you were doing as a team sergeant. Yeah. So the, the team daddy, if you will, team sergeant kind of runs the team, right? So there's an officer who usually focuses up and out, you know, by doctrine and then the team sergeant that runs the team has been there a long time. So you have supposed to be, you know, 12 green braids. These are type A personalities who always think they know what they're doing, or who are very smart and are very accomplished. And then you kind of got to lash them together and get them pointed towards a common direction. Yeah. So really taking what you were already doing and doing it with the same type of people. Yeah, exactly. That's that is that has to be almost kind of like surreal. Like you almost feel like you're doing deja vu. Yeah, it's the uh, I would say being a team sergeant special forces is the most rewarding job I've had. And okay. not a job, it was a way of life, the way I look at it. Yeah, no apps. And why would you say it's a way of life? Uh, I think that about the whole military, right? It's not a nine to five. There's not a clock. Uh, you can't turn your brain off from it, right? You're either working out to physically improve yourself or you're studying the enemy. You're studying the environment. You're reading up about policy, current events, uh, tactics, whatever it is, whatever, you know, your specialty is in the military, you're always improving. So it consumes you and you may get a call late at night. You may not. And it just, it, everything about your life is encapsulated with the military and doing your job. Yeah. Being able, like you said, being able to go at the drop of a hat when that phone rings and you got to go, you, you're, you're either ready or you're, you're ready, right? That's kind of, that's where you're at. Yeah. Any day I kind of think of like professional athletes, right? Most of them have a season, right. And they have a downtime. Now, sometimes the military based on, you know, deployment schedules, you get that, or if there's training center rotations, but for the most part, you have to keep at that high level at all times, both mentally and physically. And quite frankly, it takes a toll on you. So that's why I always say it's a way of life. And speaking specifically about that toll, has there been failures that have come out of that? And if so, like what failure has ultimately led to a great success? 
Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Tons of failures, right? That's uh, how do you have success without failure, right? How are you learning? That's how I approached life. But for me, it, specifically Special Forces, not all Green Berets are combat dive guys, right? It's a very select team that does that. So a few guys do that. And for me, that was a failure. I, I'm not a, I can swim, but not at a, con, not at a Navy SEAL level, if you will, uh, being tied up underwater and holding your breath and doing all those things. So I failed and I had to move to a different team, but that led me to go on and I came up in that team and then I was the team sergeant. So that failure led, give me another avenue for success. And I just built upon it. Now, what had, did you kind of take away from that? Was there like, you almost like a checking your ego and being like, Hey, we're going to adapt to the situation. Like you mentioned earlier, what, like, what was like a really specific takeaway that you, you would continue to like use throughout your life? Yeah, it was humbling. And I think that's a common thread in my life. A lot of things have humbled me and I am a very humble guy, but you, you graduate, you know, the Q course, you believe, man, I'm this green beret. And like, this is awesome. And I just deployed done uh, multiple deployments with them. Uh, especially with Afghanistan with a commando mission where it was very kinetic in the fight advising as the lead advisor for a commando company. And then to come back and go, Oh, cause I can't swim. I can't be on this team. And it was a hard pill to swallow, but it's like, okay, that's the requirements for this team, but I can go on another team and still succeed elsewhere where I may not need to, you know, play in the water every couple, uh, couple days a week. Yeah. Adapt. Like you said yep. throughout this whole thing so far, adapting to your environment is critical. And it, it does force you to like, Hey, maybe I'm not that good in this area, but I'm really good in this other area. I'm going to kind of play to my strengths and work on my weaknesses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I realized the toll is to take on me. I would, I would stay up late at night. This may sound silly because we would go to the pool the next day. I knew it. And I would, I'd stay up late at night, losing sleep. Right. Um, I don't want to make a joke about PTSD, you know, and post-traumatic stress, but that's almost what it was, man. I feared going to the pool. I'd wake up sweating, barely get sleep. And it was just, Hey, it wasn't healthy for me. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, we can all be there where we have that kind of like anxiety about the future because we know this event we're going to go into where is we're not where we need to be in order to do well. Cause we all want to do well at the end of the day. So now kind of fast, we're going to, we're going to keep flip flopping back and forth in your story a little bit. So I appreciate you keeping up as we look to where you are right now, what are you trying to like learn or grow or develop? Like if maybe it's a skill or a talent or an ability that you're working on now, having come out of, you know, doing your MBA, your time in the military and doing where you are today. Yeah, I think, well, two things. One, how I articulate my skill set, right? Because I have this military experience. I have this management consulting experience. I have this fancy degree from Cornell. What's that mean, right? How do I articulate to others my value proposition uh, of why I should work there or why, you know, what is my value in general? So that's really what I'm working on now is how to better articulate myself, how to better, if you want to call it branding oneself. I do that and also being adaptable to seeing what the future holds and not, not just being like target set, which I have been since I got out of the military was I'm going to get my degree from a pre prestigious university like Cornell. I'm going to become a management consultant at a big company. And I was laser focused and I accomplished some goals. Now it's kind of step back and be like, eh, let's take a breath and see what else is out there. Now, specifically when it comes to branding, I mean, a lot of people can relate, whether you're transitioning out of the military or looking for a new job what has been beneficial to you to kind of help articulate the skill sets that you do have where it's providing value to other people, but still also talking about yourself. Cause that's something that's hard for us being in the military, right? Where it's all about the team as opposed to I. Yeah. I still struggle with that once in a while in an interview, we'll say we, right. I'm like, Oh crap. I, you know, uh, we's not here in the pocket. It's just I or me. Uh, but I think that's a process for all of us that we trans as we transition out of the military or talk about ourselves, especially from a military background, is that I've been trying to do it for the last two years and I keep improving on it upon uh, how do I better articulate. And I think the key thing there is I listen. If you and I are having a conversation and I see you're not really grasping what I'm putting down, then, OK, I need to change the next time. Maybe this one's a lost cause, for lack of better words. Next time I talk to someone, how can I talk about that better? Yeah. And, you know, to what your mantra is, right? Owning the journey and really understanding like, hey, this is where I am right now. This didn't work with this person when I try to engage with them. I, I need to kind of change up my game going forward. 
yeah, own your journey, not my journey, not Tony's journey, not anybody else's own your own. In that case, it's mine, but also not being, you know, there's, it's not predetermined. So okay. you got to work for it. You got to adapt for it and make it happen. Yeah, I know. Sacrifice and hard work are right. As you yep. said, are the key ingredients. Um, now you are a best-selling author, right? Award-winning. Uh, where did you get the inspiration? Do, are, are you like a constant, is there constant books that you're always pulling off the shelf or is a course something? I don't know. Where, where are you getting your inspiration for that? Yeah. F- well, for two different things. Uh, one, I never intended to be an author, right? I, I love reading books. Uh, not the ones they told me to read in school, but the ones I chose to read. Uh, but uh, really, I was as I was going through the transition, you know, I was talking to a lot of veterans. I started posting on LinkedIn and I was communicating every day. I was talking to multiple veterans and it was really I was coming home actually from the spine surgeon. A veteran had hit me up. She had been essentially medically discharged from the military. So it was unanticipated. She was on her her transition leave. And it's like, hey, I'm effing lost. Can you help me? And I was like, whoa. And we had a good long conversation from there. I was like, I can help more people by just doing these phone calls. Let me put that into a book. So I sat down, started typing. And two days later, two thirds of the book was done. And I just, you know, went, went about the rest of it uh, after that. That's wild. Like when, when you get that, not, I don't want to say sensation, but like, you just kind of get that initial spark to then go through and like, you can just kind of blaze. And then I'm sure from there, it was just kind of like slightly tweaking and adding here as you looked at the formula. Yeah, for me, because I was still living there. This was, you know, maybe six months after I had actually retired from the army. So it was still fresh. And I had prepared, you know, a couple of years ahead of time to transition out of the military. So it was still fresh in my mind. But that's, that's how a lot of my writing and creative thought comes anyways, is I'll be sitting there be like, oh, I have an idea now and I got to write it down or like I'll be wake up in the middle of the night and write something down. Well, I say write figuratively. I type it in my iPhone in the notes, but you get my point. <laughs> so, and that was, that was my next question, right? Do you, what do you use? Like, is it a note app or the note app in Apple or is it a specific way you kind of keep track of all your ideas, thoughts? Yeah, for me, and I've been doing it for a few years now, is it, I will tell you, it's not the most efficient way. So please, it, this may not be for everyone, is just make notes. And I think about it, I'll write something down, even if I know I don't have time to type out a couple paragraphs, or I will, okay, here's the topic. Let me just write that down. And I can come back to it. And I'll just do it in there. And then I'll transfer it over to my computer. Now, you said that's been in the last couple of years. Has that greatly impacted and improved your life? Or would you say there's something else you've kind of picked up, whether it be a belief or a habit? where you're able to kind of like hold on to these ideas and then leverage them later in the future. Yeah, that, that is definitely one of the habits is when I have an idea, put the note down, I'm not getting younger. I've been hit in the head a few times, you know, the memory may slip. So I put a note down, at least I'll job to come back. I'll tell you, my girlfriend's really helping me with, how do we automate some of those things? Uh, kind of like, Hey, uh, with talking to people I have a calendar and stuff. So, you know, sometimes you got to bring the old gray beard out of the stone age and into the modern days. And she's helping me do that. So what other ways besides using a calendar has helped you automate those ideas? Yeah. Calendar, my website, herb thompsoncom like posting on there just to get content out to people of try to help out um, using, you know, different automation tools, whether it's a project management type tools, I'm exploring of doing that. But the main one right now is that the calendars really helped me out because I hate, I hate using calendars. (laughs) Do you use like Calendly or what, what's like Calendly? Yes. Okay. And then you just do like 30 minute, 15 minute, like kind of segments. Yeah. Just block off the time there. Okay. No, that's, that's great. Right. And that's what we're here to do is right. Share that actionable advice for other people. This has been just a whirlwind, right? You've, it's almost, you know, like we're on the range. I love it. Um, how would you say you are better than yesterday? Uh, it, it, the day I'm not better than yesterday, put me in the ground. Right. So, um, uh, we get smarter every day. Every day I'm trying to learn something. I may not know what that is, but I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to learn something today. And whether it's something from my kids who are teenagers or uh, my girlfriend, my dog, a fellow veteran, somebody I just bump into in the grocery store, I'm every day I need to learn something. And I, I think it's just seeking that knowledge, right? The hunger to learn 
and that hunger to improve. It, the, I think for me, the day I lose that is the day that, okay, I probably don't need to be here anymore. I'm going to put you on the spot so far today where, I mean, we're, we're the day's not done. So maybe we, if not today, then yesterday, what, do, what's, what have you recently learned? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> the intricacies of a Rubik's cube. And I know that may shock people. My 13 year old son is now all into Rubik's cube and I will tell you, he can solve it. We just bought it for him uh, within the last week. He's under a minute now of solving it and I'm under an hour of solving it. So uh, I, I'm picking up some tips from him, but he's, he's not a good teacher. <laughs> what's the, what's the secret? What like, where do you, where do people start? Cause I have one here. So I will tell you what he did and how he's under a minute and how I'm at under an hour okay. is he watched YouTube videos that show you how to solve it. Okay. And then he just came and picked up and now he doesn't need to watch YouTube videos. He's got it down. He just solves it. Okay. I didn't know if you have to like, I fi- I thought it was like, you have to go to a certain side, get the corners right or something like that. Yeah. Get the corners, get the one side. He, I'll be honest. I'm going to make myself look stupid if I go into it. Cause he tried yeah. to explain it to me and it, it just doesn't work. Uh, but he did show me a YouTube video and I was like, okay, now that makes sense. That's how they're doing it. Cause obviously the person who had the YouTube channel is, uh, t- sending that out to hundreds of thousands of people. Great. So regardless of the medium, you're always looking for a teacher. That's the takeaway. Yeah. Definitely. Oh, and I think that maybe the better takeaway is don't, discredit a teacher like i'm talking about my 13 year old son right or uh anybody i've always thought that you know especially in special forces working with indigenous i'm always going to learn something from them it, it, they may not be college educated heck a lot of them didn't know how to read or write but i'm going to learn something from them every day yeah no absolutely right be open to receive that information regardless Definitely. of your situation like who you think or who they are where they come from so if people want to reach out they see you on LinkedIn sharing all this, you know, all this stuff about, le- you know, leadership insight, career advice for transitioning veterans. We already talked about LinkedIn. Where, where else are people going to kind of touch, touch base with you? Yeah, I got my website, herb-thompson.com. I'm also just launching a YouTube channel to get some more content out there of just like the conversation we're having here and kind of maybe go about having a daily thoughts out there of posting it because it's a very efficient way to do that. Awesome. Herb, thank you so much for coming on, sharing your actionable advice, opening up about your story, coming back from failure, and most importantly, thanks for having our six. Yeah, no, my pleasure, Tony. Thank you. I don't know what you've been told, Sixers, but the lawyers would like us to remind you that the views, opinions, and comments expressed on the Got Your Six podcast are solely those of the hosts or guests to include current and previous Department of Defense employees and should in no way be considered the opinions of or endorsements on behalf of the Department of Defense or any of its components, divisions, contractors, or other current and previous staff members.